one. Hi, Kathy White, Certified Professional Ergonomist. Many of us started working from home at the beginning of the pandemic, and some of us are still working from home. It's actually maybe becoming a permanent condition for some of you. And with that, we have to go back to what was maybe originally identified as temporary controls or solutions for our home office and ask ourselves, what can we do to permanently set ourselves up for ergonomic success? It's one thing if you're only going to be working from a location for a short period of time, where maybe it's okay to have your laptop sitting on the work surface. Maybe it's okay to work directly off of the keypad and using the pointer on the laptop itself. But long term, this is not a good setup for you. Chances are you're not going to have your hand wrist in a straight or neutral posture. Chances are you're going to have your head and neck pointed downward as you're viewing the screen. So let's talk about ways you can permanently set yourself up to be healthy and safe at your computer workstation. There are two things you want to make sure that you have to start with, and they're really simple and they're not that expensive. One, let's start with an external mouse. Make sure you have enough room on your work surface so you can take this, move it around using what I call the whole arm mousing technique. And you want to make sure this is at a good height for you as well. Your arms are close to your body, your elbows kind of about a 90 degree angle here. That's the first piece. Make sure you have a nice mouse, fits your hand. Next thing, you definitely want to make sure you have an external keyboard. Again, these items are not expensive. I'm showing you a wired keyboard here. A wireless might be even better for you, kind of like this wireless mouse. Just makes it a little easier to set up. So I'm just gonna move my laptop away from me. I've got my keyboard now. And now you can see the problem I have at this point is I'm still bending my neck down to view the screen. When it comes to a monitor riser, you can go out and purchase one, but it's also okay to use a stack of books like what you might've done at the beginning of the pandemic. That's totally okay to do. I have a cute little gift box here, and this is something that is an example of something that's sturdy. You can see it's a stable surface for the laptop screen. Now this one's high for me. You could play around with the angle. You basically want the top third of the screen to align with if you imagined a horizontal line of sight extending from your eyes. You kind of want to hit that top third of the screen here, about an arm's length viewing distance away. So this is all really critical. The other critical piece is your chair. I have a very temporary solution here that I'll show you. This is just a chair with a cushion that is made by a flannel blanket. Not ideal long term. You really need to look at your chair. I'm going to move this one away and just I'm going to show you an example, but again, this is very subjective. I would recommend you go to some kind of office furniture store, find something that works well for you because this example actually does not work well for me, but it could for somebody with a different body dimension uh, criteria because you can see here, I'm having a hard time getting good back support. So you want to make sure that you're able to get some really good back support in your seat. Um, your thighs are about parallel to the floor. Your feet are flat on the floor. If you have armrests, ideally they could be adjustable in height. If you do use them, you want your arms close to your body about elbow height. Don't dig into your armrests. You don't have to have armrests. This is another personal preference matter. So just make sure whatever chair you pick is stable and supportive. If you have wheels on them, just make sure whatever surface you're on, I have carpet here, make sure it can roll freely. Last thing I was going to mention is external monitors. I'm just showing you one here, but some of you might have been used to having these in your, in your outside of office, your regular work office, and you may have been working for a long time on the one screen. Maybe you're used to that, but if you need to go back to a dual screen or a dual monitor, you probably want to pick something similar to what you had before, and you want to make sure that the screen, if you use both of them about 50-50, keep them next to each other. If you use one more than another, then have that one be your primary screen in front of you. You want them both to be at about the same height and as close to each other as possible. And in addition to all those are all the other techniques that we've been talking about over the months with proper just use of the technology that you have here. So again, just making sure you're not doing things like flicking your wrist or attacking the keyboard with a lot of force, bending forward in your chair when you really get engrossed in your work, making sure you're taking regular breaks for your vision and for your body posture. I hope these tips helped you if you're looking to make your home office a more permanent office.